That's okay, it. so we've been in the same conference, JUCO, L.A., everything. Did you also know that we both have had stalkers in our career? <laughs> did you I know did, that? I hey. just learned that off set. <laughs> <Hey, laughs> <man. laughs> stalkers, hey. it's very similar. Hey, it's these looks, man. It's these looks that me and Key over here got, man. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that smile. Yeah. No, the, the, it, <laughs> What's going on? It's Keyshawn, and welcome to another edition of Undisputed Presents All Facts, No Breaks. Joining me today is an 11-year NFL veteran, a Pro Bowl wide receiver, and TJ Late-Ass Hushmanzada. That's his name, TJ Hushmanzada's Late. That's right, he was supposed to be here at the top of the hour at 10 o'clock with me, but for whatever weird reason... I was told 10.15. See, but, but see, you told 10.15, I'm told 9.45 to 10. So somebody lying. <laughs> and if it's somebody on my side lying, then we, we'll have a conversation about that for sure. Well, we here. No, you here. We, I we appreciate here. you. <laughs> I hadn't seen you in a long time. I appreciate you. And my son, Keyshawn Johnson Jr., joins the show as well. How you, you doing, know. TJ? I just want to let you know you're my Madden GOAT. You're the best Madden player that I've ever been with, you hey. know, with the Bengals. <laughs> yeah, 2007, 8, 9. Yeah, I was you still You still play Madden? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, we got to run that phase. Oh, yeah, no, but we wait, got to. I don't understand. I'm your father, but he your best Madden Oh, uh, yeah, no, I was a Bengals guy on Madden. It was him, Chad Johnson. It was just, it was unstoppable. Bro, your Madden. kids, you're nothing to your kids. I'm starting to realize <laughs> that with my son now. Yeah, I'm but starting got, to realize that. But according to them, I got high grades on Madden. I don't know nothing about it, but, but that's, you know. That's your son. <laughs> yeah, but that's crazy, though. I would never sit up here You were pretty like, good at Madden, too, but nah, him and Chad were, it's a whole different thing. It was it was different. Okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> you, mentioned, you mentioned Chad, Keyshawn. TJ, you and Chad uh, were one of the best receiving duels in Bengals history. Both of uh, you, 20, 2001 Bengal draft picks, roommates at Oregon State, obviously, I know that. Both of you uh, amassed over 18,000 yards, combined 111 touchdowns. Combined 18 seasons of dealing with Chad in Cincinnati. You, you spent eight seasons with the Bengals and then a few with the, the uh, Seahawks, the Ravens. And then you was done by the time you got to the Raiders. You was probably done when you got to the Ravens as well as the Raiders. So what was it like being around Chad and, and hanging out with him and just kind of, I don't know, having to deal with his bullshit on a day to day? You don't even realize it's bullshit day to day because you're used to it. Yeah. You. <laughs> Knowing Chad, since we was at Oregon State, uh, we get to Cincinnati together. And it made it easy for him and I because it's a familiar face. And when you go into a locker room, you really don't know what to expect. So we just kind of stayed with each other. But dealing with Chad, I was used to it. And so all the antics or whatever he was doing, <laughs> like when I met Chad, Chad was quiet. Chad didn't say much. Yeah. And, and so when he did become what he is now with 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 all the talking, it surprised me, but I was used to him, and so. But I was used to him too, and still got on my nerves. Nah, but you're a little different though. It, I wouldn't say it got on my nerves. That I, I don't think it ever got on my nerves. It was just like it is what it is. Yeah, he just, I, I love him to death, but God, I used to be like sometime like Chad. Seriously. That's just who he is. That's <laughs> Chad is, but number one. I say this all the time. Chad should be in the Hall of Fame. He 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 is probably he, going to be he, in He's it. never made a finalist list. He he look at but, this. But but he'll probably he'll probably wind up it's just going to take a minute. This is my criteria for the Hall of Fame and I think it's the best criteria I've ever heard anybody say, not just because it's coming from me. Mhm. Mm because the Hall of Fame is the best of the best. Yeah. And it's not, it's continued. You have to have continued greatness. To me, if you at any point in your career have a stretch of five to six years uh -huh. where you're a top five player at your position, yeah. you're a Hall of Famer. Five to six years where you are a top five player at your position. And if you weren't, you're not a Hall of Famer. Okay. Sorry, because it's the best of the best. And Chad fits that criteria from 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
he was a top five receiver in the league. He led the AFC four years in a row. Yeah, that, I argue. I don't argue with you at all about his production. What I would what I would say is what the voters probably are thinking. He didn't win anything. He, we can't control that. No, but that's them. You know them. Yeah, they, yeah. That's them. He didn't win anything. He didn't have gaudy enough numbers. Okay? He didn't play long enough. That's the key. Okay? And his numbers aren't How many gaudy. years you play, Key? He played 11. So, we all play the same amount of years, right? The guys that played 15, 16 years, does that make them better? No, you just... But they numbers and you are get a, better. You get three to 4,000 more yards, but the numbers, 200 more catches. But that's the, the people in the room that are voting or looking at the total numbers, the impact that you had on your team at the time that you was getting those numbers and where your team was at. Now, when I retired, when I retired after my 11th season... There was only like one player that was in the Hall of Fame at the time that had better numbers than me. That was Jerry Rice. That's great. That was it. But I don't, you know, I'm like, whatever. It doesn't matter, you know. It's like whatever. As, as, as I've always said, like my mother said, I'm her Hall of Famer, so it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Coming from where you come from to yeah, make it to where you made it. Man, I was my, I tell people this all the time, TJ, and you feel the same way, and I'm sure Chad feel the same way. At the end of the day, we didn't play football to get a yellow jacket. Nah. We played football to line our pockets and get our parents what they needed and our families what they needed. Unlike a lot of people, they play because they want to be known as the greatest. I played because I wanted to cash in. I think when you go to JUCO route like we went, it's, All three of us is JUCO babies. I'm trying to financially put myself in a great position. The Hall Absolutely. of Fame doesn't even cross our mind. Never. At all. Never. You're just trying to get paid to support your family. That's it. That's that's about all. You want to get the money. But I do believe that he'll have a real chance and opportunity in the future to be in. Now, think, it might not get into the senior committee, but... <laughs> I think it should be sooner than later, but obviously I'm biased. I've seen oh, him I'm every biased day. too. I'm super biased. He belong in, but it's all of the, the 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 yellow jacket on the sideline antics. It's the backlash of just who Chad is as a personality because most of the time, prior to the way that they're doing it now, you had a lot of writers and white writers and voters that was a part of it. Now it's a little bit different. Yeah. You got coaches in there, personnel people. You know, you kind of got like ex-players in there along with the journalists that's doing it. So it's a little bit different now. Maybe his name comes up later on down the line and he gets into that finalist category. I mean, you know. But at the end, he had a hell of a career. So I can, and if I was him, I wouldn't even worry about it. TJ, what made you go the JUCO route? Was you under-recruited or was it just... Man, that <laughs> motherfucker didn't have no grades, Keyshawn. Oh, yeah, why you, you go ask hey, that question? I got to ask no, both no, of you no. guys, right? That's why? So for me, <laughs> uh, it was everything you said. I... I didn't graduate from high school. I don't know if you know the that. The motherfucker didn't have no grades. And so, yeah, I didn't have grades. I didn't play football until my senior year in high school. And okay. so I really didn't have a choice. Uh, football wasn't something that I played growing up. I was just, my homeboy went JUCO. That, and I followed him. I'm like, oh, we together every day. We, I'm chilling with this dude every day. And so when he went to Cerritos, I'm like, shit, I'm going too. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how it happened. But yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't recruited at all. No, no yeah. mom didn't have no grades. That's was, what it, Same thing, your yeah, daddy yeah. ain't had no grades. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That's Gotta just the reality the of it. Yeah. When you in high school, where we grew up yeah. at in the city, unlike you, the high unlike. schools, well, I'm just telling the truth. Yeah, unlike you. I had you, the grades. That's the difference. Exactly. Feel, yeah. You also had your own book. You didn't have to share with nine different students one damn textbook. I hear it's you. A, it's a big difference. So, yeah. yeah. You're not prepared. When we was growing up, we were not prepared, so to speak, for college. So the next alternative and the best alternative was to go to junior college. And so you go to junior college, you do your three semesters, and you get up out of there, and then you go ahead and go to the next level. Yeah. And then from there, you it's a grind. Like, you. it's a real grind in JUCO. Yeah. If you getting out of JUCO... Yeah. You could do anything, huh? Man, I, oh, God, you could do anything. <laughs> yeah, if you make it out of junior... <laughs> you could do anything. You're on your own. You're on your own. I mean, bro, we putting top ramen... No, 
under our bed Man. and hope in your roommate and be like, bro, do not come in my room. Don't be <laughs> like you hiding it under your bed in your closet. It because- ain't even that. It ain't even that. I play, think about it. I played Juco, I played Juco ball with a Hall of Fame wide receiver. This particular Hall of Fame wide receiver was not from LA, not from California. He was from Florida. There, everybody don't know who he is. No, I ain't, I'm just gonna okay, get it. Yeah, right. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> yeah, so wait, TJ. Right. They, I witnessed them breaking into vending machines on campus to get food. Cause that's how hard it is at JUCO. Yeah, wow. So imagine when he left JUCO to go to college and then become a draft pick in the NFL. Man, dude died and went to heaven. It's easy for you at yeah. that point. Man, right? it's, it's all, everybody I played with that made it to Sundays out of Juco, they'll tell you the same story. Bro, just going Division One, and you get a check every month and they feed you all, like, that part of it was like, <laughs> wow. The Juco. Like, you trying to put everything in your backpack because you don't realize you can come back tomorrow and get the same thing, but you stuffing everything in your backpack as soon as you get there. And so best player, best players in my opinion, that's uh, that that ever graced the field. A lot of them dudes go to that JUCO, mm-hmm. hungry. It's the grind. It's the grind. Yeah, it really is. TJ, what are your thoughts on the current Bengals roster and Joe Burrow? If Joe can stay healthy, I, I really I like their chances. They the first round pick gives them the ability that if somebody goes down. Because you, you have two tackles in Orlando Brown and Trent Brown. Mm-hmm. And if either of them go down, now you have a first-round tackle that can come in and replace them. And if not, do you play them at guard? If Joe stays healthy, I like the Bengals' chances against anybody. The, the key for me is can they protect them? The safety position last year, I felt like once they lost Von Bell and Jesse Bates, they took a step back. Can they can they figure that out? Can they get some leadership on the back end of that defense? But that team is going to uh, go as far as Joe Burrow takes them. If he can stay healthy, they they got a chance. Mm-hmm. Dad, what are your opinion on the Bengals? I wow, mean, that's too slow to respond. <laughs> they cool and all. Wow. But when they got rid of Joe Mixon, that question marked me. I don't know what they're getting ready to do with T. Higgins. That's a question mark because T. Higgins ain't playing for nineteen million dollars. He's, yeah, he's a number one receiver. No, he ain't gonna I think. Play for it. He's gonna pay for. He's gonna play. I, he shouldn't. He is. No, he shouldn't. I mean, I agree Man, fuck with you. That. But Give me my money. When you look at how the Bengals have done business, like they did the same thing with Jesse Bates, long term deal, long term deal, franchise him. He goes to Atlanta. It's gonna be the same thing with T. Fingers crossed, he stays healthy. Um, but I'll Man, be. But pay him. What's the problem? They don't. You paid the quarterback. They don't want to pay him. Okay, then train him. They don't want to do that because I feel like they feel they have a chance to do something special. So with Jamar. Yeah, but if my mind ain't right, and I ain't helping you, TJ. The mind is not going to be a hundred percent in. It exactly. is not. We my all mind, know that. Yeah. So we know that. So why would you try to force a player to play and maximize his ability? if he ain't feeling good when he walking in the building. Now, if I'm T. Higgins, I'm pissed off, but I'm playing and I'm going to get that $20 million. Yeah, I'm not leaving it on and, the table. Yeah, and, 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 and now I'm trying to get $26, 27000000 million, so I have to put my best foot forward because of what I see other guys getting. Yeah, the, I mean, the floor now is Michael Pittman. That's the floor. And can the ceiling be Amon Raw? That, but the floor has to oh, be picked. My ceiling, AJ Brown. I ain't even thinking about Amara. I play outside. I'm out there with the grown men. Yeah, I mean, and, and if your ceiling is AJ Brown, that's even better. Yeah, my that, ceiling that, is AJ that, Brown. That's even better. And so, if I'm T Higgins, I don't like the situation that I'm in. But no, I'm I get make it. The no, best I, I, no, I. Yeah, it's hard to say no to twenty million dollars. I get it, especially when you haven't made money because he hasn't made money. The second round no. pick, he had made mm-hmm. money. I mean, in, in retrospect, he's made a few million dollars, which is a lot of money, but he hasn't cashed not the life, bag yet. Not life-changing. Not money. life-changing. No. So I could see him playing for $20 million. I just hate that he... You just can't that. play through... Can't hate, I, I hate that. Something ain't feeling right. Shut it down. Like, that. that's it. When you're not feeling... If you don't feel 100%, you can't play. <laughs> and that, that's the difference. But then, but you're going to be cheating your teammates at that point. 
you're not, you know, you're not cheating your teammates. You're looking after yourself. Well, I guess because you can look at it that way. Ultimately, we've been brainwashed to think everything is about the team. And it is. But I got to come first. Oh, yeah, for sure. I got to come first. Oh, 100%. So T. Higgins has to put himself first in this situation because the team, they're putting themselves oh, first. Oh, you, you, you're talking to one of the most selfish football players to ever play. No, 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 no. I don't know what you're See, laughing that, that, at, Keyshawn. Hey, that oh, ain't... All that's, facts, that's no breaks. That's yeah, all. I, I don't look at it as One being, of the most selfish football see, players to ever play. I don't even know why you would say that. but that Because they gonna say it anyway. That's not being so, selfish. That's looking after... Oh, I get it. I just, I just use the word to describe that's, it. That's, that's how all. they would describe it. But that's how they would describe it. They all do the same thing. Absolutely. When a coach gets a better opportunity, he goes. He goes. Is that not being selfish? Or as soon as he wins... What's the difference? Or as soon as he wins 10 games in a couple years, the first thing he do is go say, man, I'm making I need a re-up. Right, I need a re-up. Re-up me. Yeah. Get, so is that not being so? It's the no, same. I get it. No. Even, even in a line of business that we're doing now, you work in the media. You contract up, somebody oh, else wants to pay me. some more money. Oh, oh I got to go. I ain't and shy so, about it. You can't get this for free. Everybody is, quote Sorry. unquote, selfish when it comes to that particular, we have to look after I first. Yeah. So you 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 train Rome Aduze, huh? Yeah, man. I've been, key. when it comes to the training, man, I've been in. That's the receiver I, that went to Chicago Bears. Yeah. With Caleb trained, Williams at UW, played in Washington. Higgins, Pittman. Um, but this year I had uh, Brian Thomas, Roma Dunze, and Jermaine Burton. Shout and out Jermaine, Calabasas product. Yes, sir. He out there right now. And he went yeah. to Calabasas for a year. Stop. Nah, two each years. Other. It's a product. Two years. He's a product. Two years. Two years. Two, two years. Two yeah. years. Um, <laughs> so Rome was actually training with Ricky Pro. Oh, okay. He was training with Ricky Pro, and he comes out to throw with us because we got all the quarterbacks with uh -huh. us. And he sees me with my guys. Comes over, gets my number, and was like... Uh, so you stole him? I didn't steal him. He reached out to me. You stole him? Well, I guess. From Ricky Pro, you stole <laughs> Rome Aduze from Ricky Pro. Ricky Pro was minding his own business. No, 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 And no. training his guys. I'm, if I go get my phone, I'm going to show you the text message. Can I start working out with you? No, I'm just... I said, uh, <laughs> just let me know when you want to work. And that was it. And he was yeah. like... Uh, Man, I'm going to be out there these days. Can we work? I said, every day, you just let me know. And we went literally Monday through Friday, every single day. You like what he, you, you, did? You, were you impressed? I was impressed, man. He, the boy is, he, he big. He like your size, 6'3", 215. He ran 10'5 and 100 meters in high school. Mm -hmm. That boy can run. I mean, he can run. He yeah. drops his weight. Um, he has good quickness. To me, his ball skills is crazy. Like, Hands or body snatcher? Both. Like, he, like he'll... like When you run a deep post route, a lot of guys, we're going to catch it here. He'll just be running full speed and just snatch it out the air. Does not slow down. And that's not easy. And, and so I like his ball skills. I like his ability to drop his weight. Good quickness. A really fashion in what people... He probably should have run a 4-3, but he'll tell you how that combine training went. Um, but, yeah, I, I like Rome a ton. Yeah. He's going to be a real good player. Who does he remind you of in the NFL? Man, that's crazy because I've had so many people ask me that. I can't compare him to anybody. Ball skills, I would probably say maybe Larry Fitzgerald, but he's faster. Probably a little better route runner. So, like, the totality of who he is, I haven't seen one player yet that I could compare him to. I don't know. Because he's big, he can run, he can run routes, he has great ball skills. You rarely see that in one player at his size. Currently in the National Football League? He's uh, taller uh, than A.J. Brown, huh? Yeah, Rome is Yeah, but A.J. AJ Brown is... He's a little heavier. Yeah, he's, a, he's yeah. built different. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know who you can compare him. Because I've been asked this question a lot lately, and I can't come up with an answer. It wouldn't be Devontae Adams. He's a little bigger than Tay. Tay is a little more sudden in his mm -hmm. movements, but he's faster. Hmm. Interesting. I, I haven't I haven't thought of a, a comp at all. That's a great question because I've been asked and I can't even come up with an answer. Okay, how about this? Do you think he's the best receiver in the draft? Yeah. I believe he has the best opportunity also to prove that. 
because him and Caleb Williams, they gonna, they will grow together. Um, Marvin Harrison with Kyler Murray, that, that will be a good pairing just because I think Kyler Murray is a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. Neighbors is going to suffer because he doesn't have a quarterback play. Where did he go? He went to the Giants, Giants with Daniel Giants. Jones. Brian Thomas has an opportunity to surprise some people because he's with Trevor Lawrence. And okay. he's another kid that I pretty much trained him from the get-go, January 1st or whenever LSU season ended, um, that can really run. But, yeah, I think Rome playing with Keenan Allen, he'll learn yeah. some little nuances. The so situation rise. Yeah, the like, game. Yeah. He'll learn how to play the game from a guy now, that really knows. He's for sure in the best position of all of them mm -hmm. because he got other players around him, and it's not all about him. Where they're gonna focus on them, and he's gonna yeah, be the guy. Absolutely, yeah. where Marvin Harrison Jr. They gonna focus on. Marv. They most likely gonna focus in on him. Yeah, in that situation in Arizona, so it's gonna be tough. And in the neighbors and in New York, we'll who see, knows huh? with Daniel Jones? Yeah. Well, I. I'm not like everybody else, so Daniel. Yeah, I like Daniel, Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones too. is fine, man. He yeah. offensive line, running back, needs some other help. Let's see what he is. Everybody doesn't have to be a six thousand yard passer, and everybody's not going to be Patrick Mahomes. So, but I like I like Dable as a play caller and a head coach. Mm -hmm. yeah. He'll be he'll be able because Neighbors is explosive, and so if they're going to run the ball like they want and force teams to play single high, Neighbors to get some one on ones and. He, he can get it done. Daniel Jones had to stay healthy and be accurate. He didn't have a terrible year when they after they paid him. It's mm -hmm. just when you get paid, you can't get worse, yeah. and, and that's the problem. Will Will the Bears make the playoffs now that they got they this this is the best situation in the history okay. of the National Football League for the number one overall draft pick. Usually, when you pick number one overall, you go into the sorriest ass team mm -hmm. that was ever created. That's not the case with Caleb. Caleb going into a competitive team that should compete within the division. Uh, this year, you got DJ Moore, Keenan Allen. They just signed Swift at the running back position. They got the tight end. Now they drafting a Duze on the defensive side. They got Swift. They got the Jalen the, uh, Johnson. Johnson. They got Tremaine Edwards. I mean, they got some stuff. Are they going to make the playoffs? I'm not going to straddle the fence. I'm going to say yeah. Mm. I'm gonna Year say one? yeah. Yeah, like if Caleb is what many thinks he is, the Bears make the playoffs. What you think he is? Be I, honest, man. Don't act no, like no, 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 it's no, over no, with no. now. No, I like Caleb, and I. Prior, that ain't, that ain't no, what I said. I said what you think me, he is. <laughs> prior to me meeting Caleb, I was uncertain. I was uncertain about uh, his commitment, uh, who he was, and then. I, I was able to meet him, and I spent quite a bit of time with him. And so the way he carries himself is somewhat misunderstood. Why, um, why, why, why is every every damn player that come out of USC, people got to say that they worried about their commitment? Why? I don't understand that. But that's coming from somewhere. But I don't understand every player. That, they said that about you? <laughs> well, I, don't, I never listened to it if they did, but but – Players that come out of USC, the first thing people say is, oh, I worry about their commitment because they're coming, in L.A. That's, that's what coming, I mean. Probably because they're in L.A. But it's coming from somebody in that building that's within that program. How would that come out? But it always, I mean, like, literally, I don't care who the player is. That's one of the questions that always come up, TJ, is their commitment. I'm like, because they live in L.A., they from L.A., they enjoy going out to the nightclubs and dinners. And and, and it could be these agents that, because he didn't sign with them, that they may start to put these things out there because yeah. he didn't sign with any of the, the so-called power. He didn't, he didn't he go didn't that route. To. He, he did not. No, you don't need and to. And so I believe... That ain't nothing but a pump fake that you got to sign with somebody. Caleb has an ability to keep plays alive. Yeah. That's just God given, man. That that you can't work on that. That's a God given ability that he's had. But can he do that same thing, no TJ? He in can. The pros? You just can't do it every play. Yeah, that's he true. tried no, to do true. it every play at no, that's true. You can't that's true. do. He has to pick and choose when I'm gonna make something happen. You cannot try to make the big play all the time. But with Keenan Allen, you got a guy that's gonna create separation. Let's throw in anticipation. Let's get the ball out. With DJ Moore, you got a guy that can get down the field. Rome can do a little bit of both. And so it's what you said. We've never seen a first pick. 
come into this. No, you never. And, and so I expect the Bears to compete for a playoff spot if Caleb Williams is what we think he is. And I actually expect him to be a wild card. I believe Green Bay, uh, that division is going to be, should be tough. But I, I think I like the Bears to get a wild card. I really yeah, do. Yeah, the year I got drafted, we, the year I got drafted, they were four, no, they were two and 14. When I got drafted as number one pick, the next year we went one and 15 and had the number one pick again. Like, That's how that it just you the first pick yeah, for a you reason. Go for a reason. The bear, like if you just think about it, I mean they were doing okay with Levy Smith. They, and, they, and, they completely fucked that up. And Matt Nagy got them to the playoffs with Trubisky, but it's like they can't they can't sustain it. Yeah. And so it looks as if they had a young guys that this can be something that can be sustainable for years. Well, let's let's hope so. So. You watch the draft, cover the draft, all that. Which team you think won the NFL draft and which team you think just, I don't know, I don't want to call it lost, didn't do shit to I help like, themselves? We're speaking of the Bears. I like the Bears draft. I really like when you can get Caleb and Rome. I like the Commanders. I like them getting Jane, Jane Daniels and uh, I don't want to mispronounce his name, Sam Rastill from the DB from Michigan. I uh -huh. like him a ton. Um, it's... When you say who who had a terrible draft, it's just you really don't like the player that they draft. I mean, honestly, we don't know who had a terrible we'll, In a, a couple years, we'll look back and say, damn. Yeah. Why did they draft him as opposed to this guy? You don't know. I, I don't like Buffalo uh, trading with the Chiefs. I don't like that. I'm not, I don't, I don't care what you're giving me. I'm not trading with. Well, why? I'm not. I'm just not doing that. But why? What's that? What? Because they drafted Xavier Worthy. I'm not trading unless it's just well worth it, which I don't believe they got enough back. But so, they. But I'm saying I, I don't know what I don't know what the trade was at the end. But the Chiefs went and got Xavier Worthy from Texas, the receiver. Mm -hmm. That's not what the Bills wanted. No, but so if that's what you want. And you think he can help you? Then go right ahead. I, I look at it like this: the Chiefs were, to me, offensively as bad as they'll ever be last year, and they still won a Super Bowl. Yeah, you give them somebody that, and Xavier Worthy is not just a fast dude. He's not Tyreek Hill. He's more Deshaun Jackson. Yeah, he's like Tyreke a DJ because they, they're built very similar. Yeah, but you give them that down the field threat that they haven't had since Tyreek Hill. Then that's gonna make them better. Yeah, but he, that's gonna make them better. At 165 pounds, soaking wet on a rainy day. I, I mean, DJ came in at 170. He was yeah, able to get it no, done. I, I understand. I get it. I I get it. But I guess you don't. You can't touch him nearly as much as you could in the past. Right. And if you utilize him on quick stuff, I mean, it's it's fine. I just that lightweight always scared me at their receiver position, man. Because I just seen them get ragdolled, them little ones. They will get rag. I they mean, get ragdoll when they small like that. Tyreek short, but you look at, but not tiny. You look at the Andy Reeds, the McVeighs, the uh, Shanahan's, the good play callers. Yeah, they put him in position. They gonna put him in condensed splits. They gonna motion him. They gonna keep him off the ball. If they see he can't handle that, he can't beat the press. They gonna make sure. Well, he gonna beat the press. They gonna make sure you can't get hands on him by moving him. He he gonna beat the press, Keyshawn, by default. As soon as he yeah, line up, the they scared. Sure. Yeah, they gonna be scared. They yeah, scared. Yeah, for sure. They gonna be scared. They, they gonna to death. play off. Ain't nobody pressing them. They gonna play off. Yeah, I guess, I guess when you think about it, you don't know who won the draft. So you look at the Atlanta Falcons, right? Keyshawn and, and Michael Penix and everybody going crazy. Mm. I like that. Michael I Penix. Yeah, I like it too. I liked it. I didn't I didn't understand uh why they draft Penix. Eighth though? Listen. It don't if, matter. If doesn't if matter. Kirk Cousins is what the Falcons think he will be, they'll be pretty good. They'll never be picking in the top 10. True. So when Kirk Cousins is done, where do you get your franchise quarterback? Where do you go get him from? True. So now you believe you have him. If Penix has to sit two years, so be it. I don't give a damn that he's going to be 26. That because if he's, sitting, if he's sitting two years, if I'm Raheem Morris, uh... By the time he's ready to play, I'm good to go. So now that's going to give me six, seven, eight years as a coach and as a GM. And but so I don't mind that one bit because when Kirk Cousins is done, where and 
who is your quarterback going to be? Plus, it will be Penix. Plus, on top of that, if Kirk Cousins goes the distance of his contract, then that tells me You've they done. done went to a couple Super Bowls. They done won some stuff. So if he going to play... Then it's all right, right? If he going to play three to four years, that means that Kirk Cousins just lights out. Yeah. My money says he's done... <laughs> in two. In two. Yeah. That's what my money says. My money says he does some good stuff this year. He comes back. He does some good stuff the following year. But yet they start to get Michael Penix ready to go. I like it. I, I, I know a lot of people didn't like them drafting Penix, I liked it. I'm biased. I seen Penix every day in training. I didn't understand when people said, oh, he might not be a first rounder. I'm like, I don't know what they looking at. Because I'm out there every day with him. Mm -hmm. Because they hype up, they, they they hype up all the other ones. So they got to make sure that they get with their position that they need to Man, get Man, this in. dude is out there with random receivers. Oh, I understand. Throwing comebacks, digs, post routes, on the money, in stride, Damn near and they every go, and single they go back day. To the injuries from the early days in Indiana, and they want to harp on the ACL and harp on the shoulder injury. That's what that's that's what they do. And you know what you do? They build up. They they build up who they want to build up. Go look at University of Washington prior yeah. to Michael Penix. Mm. All those receivers were there. The majority of the linemen were there. They weren't going undefeated. No. Michael Penix gets there. Completely different team. So former Colorado player Xavier Smith blasted Deion Sanders and the program in a recent interview with The Atlantic, and Shador fired back. He said, quote, I don't even remember him, to be honest. Bro had to be very mid at best. NFL, team, uh, NFL teams passed on Spencer Rattler for things he said in high school. Do you guys think this kind of behavior could impact Shador's draft stock? Wait, hold on. Who passed on who? <laughs> Sorry? Who passed? What was it again? <laughs> NFL teams passed on Spencer. I Rattler heard you. No, I heard you. I just want you. I want to hear you say that again. For things that he said in high school, Spencer, he, who? Radler. <laughs> Come on, man. Stop. He's the number one player in high school. So, I almost called you your brother. <laughs> I almost said Vance. Well, do you he, think this kind of behavior could impact Shador's stock? Keyshawn, Spencer Radler ain't nowhere near. The quarterback that Shadur is going to wind up being. So I understand the question. It will not hurt his stock at all. Not one bit. I can go, you know, I covered the NFL draft, obviously, for several years as, at ESPN on the big stage with Kuyper and the gang. There was so much information, TJ, that I compiled, Keyshawn, from people out there in their social media. Guys that are currently playing in the National Football League at the same position, also others that went high in the draft. I'm talking about high, high as you can go. With questionable social media tactics and things in their social media, it didn't drop them. And they have gone on to have successful so far NFL careers. And I'm talking about not talking about somebody's play statistics, I'm talking about egregious things that you would look at and go, oh, shit, he a bad dude. I don't even want to talk to him. That dude got some issues. Now, this is all part of the Dion hate. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. They going to do that. It's a Dion hate. Shadur going to be Shadur. Bottom line, and he'll be one of the top players off the board when his time comes. That was yeah. my next question was, do you guys think he's a top five player for next year's draft? I don't think that's going to affect him. Me, personally, I don't like that he said that. Why? Just because you're the quarterback of a team. This is what I'm... You can say he's... I don't even remember him. Like, if this... Was it was a kid that said this? Was he on the team the entire season? No, he was or there. He was there before. Spring ball, right? Yeah, yeah. And then oh, and then, okay, out. I get you not remembering him. So, no, no, I don't have a problem with it. I thought no. he was on the team last year... And, and then just, just transferred. No, yeah, no, but, even he, if, but even if he was... You should know him. But even if he was... How old are you, TJ? 46. You old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This the real... This yeah. is the real... This is what they do. But you know... This is what... To see him over there in the corner, that's what they do. They argue and, on social media. And I get it, though. <laughs> really, Shador is defending you. his pops because Buddy took a shot at Prime. But he, like, did, but he did that. And, and so... No, it, it's not going to affect him. No, it's not it, going to affect it's, him. It's, it's not but going think, to affect but him think one about bit. about it, though, TJ... This day and age, an era in which we are in, this is what they do. It's crazy, though, because I say that, 
And this I for sure would have responded. And it's crazy that I just said what I said. Because I would have. Uh, 100%. <laughs> I, I for sure would have. Oh, I for sure would have You know me, Keyshawn. You know yourself. You know me. I'll cut you to the white meat real slick. Yeah. And keep it moving. Yeah. I, and have everybody say, damn. Now, so this is what they do. So I don't have a problem with it. Nor do I have a problem with Prime defending himself in this situation. Because you now, as a ex-player, trying to assassinate my character as the coach. In how I run my program, because I come in, like all coaches come in. And the first thing that they do, I remember Bill Parcells came in in 1997. The Big Tuna came in. We had our team meeting, the whole pretty old thing. Big Tuna walked up. One of the first things came out of his mouth. is some of you aren't going to be here, but I know I am. Mm. That was one of the first things came out of the coach's mouth. And so, you know me, I'm a smart ass. I know I'm going to be here. I know I'm going to be here, right? <laughs> so at the I'll end, don't worry about that. I, I know I'm going to be here, but the message is if you don't work and you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're going to be gone. See, the problem is... That's all Prime was telling them. Players aren't used to honesty. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, coach, Keyshawn. <laughs> they not used to a coach being upfront and honest yeah. with them. They always beat around the bush. Prime comes in there. Some of y'all not going to be here. Y'all might want to hit the portal. That's shocking. It's yeah. like, well, because the coach isn't going to tell you that. He was upfront and honest to these guys, and you're not used to that. <laughs> you're not are, used to that. And they all ran for the portal. He didn't select I mean, he told them. He just told you to Y'all might want to hit the portal because some of y'all not going to play. Yeah. Coaches aren't going to do those type of things. They're not used to that type of... Uh, just being so forthright. You're like, wow. But I need that. I want that. I would prefer because, that also. Because at the I end, I want to know where I stand. I'm going to go bust my ass and I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do. Okay? I remember that same conversation that same day. Bill, afterwards, you know, I coach you come up to you after press conference, talk to you, hey, I want to see you in the office. Yeah, yeah. So I come to the office. He goes, how much you weigh? I said, man, I don't, I'm probably... 225 right now. He goes, what was that guy? What did that guy weigh that played at USC? I said, 208, 210. He says, that's the guy I want to see. I came back doing the offseason conditioning. I was 205. So you win automatically with him because you did what you were supposed to do. Right, right. And that's all Prime was saying is, hey, if y'all can't get it with this program, y'all might want to hit, hit get, this portal. If you get better... Yeah. You're you, perfect for my program. You got action. But you guys were terrible the year prior to me coming. Yeah. So now, either you got to get better or you got to go because I want to win. That, and and that's, nothing, all, that's basically all he was saying. nothing wrong with that. No, not at all. Because if he doesn't win, he's getting fired. If he don't win at some point, he'll get fired. Yes. Like all coaches. And yeah, you, and there was, there was Colorado walk-ons that stayed and started this year and played. So, yeah, you know, there's they some people that it. Yeah, there's some people that can deal with that coaching and some people that can't. But do you think Colorado will be better than they were last year? What do, what do, you, what do you predict their record? I don't know their schedule off the top of my head. I know I'm, they're in a Big 12 now. Yeah, I've seen yeah, their it's schedule. A whole different conference. I've seen it. I just haven't looked at it, but I think they will be better. They were, Keyshawn, they were literally... In every single game except the Oregon game, they got run out of the building. Right. They got run out of the building in the Oregon game. And I think whatever the last game of the year was, Shador didn't even play. But every game, they were up by 28 at halftime against Stanford. Right. Just and they cool. wind up just losing it. Mm -hmm. If they had three more minutes left on the clock against USC, they beat USC. This is an entirely new team made up of about 90 new players that came in in between transfer portal, between walk-ons, between scholarship guys that was a part of that team last year. He had no offensive line. He was sacked the most in college football a year ago. So, yeah, absolutely. They played half the damn season without Travis Hunter. So when you look at it, I think they, they're going to be one of those 12 teams in the final as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if I'll take it that far. Um, well, they'll make the college football playoff, but they'll be much better. Uh -huh. They have better players now. They got and better players, too. The, the reason they suffered last year is they didn't have the depth. No, Guys go right. down. They, they, don't, they don't have the bodies and the depth behind that. And so another year of getting guys out the portal, recruiting uh, the top kids out of high school, they'll be much better. I, I can see Colorado going 
eight and four, nine and three this season. That's good. I think that's a top 25. But okay, so Roger Goodell raised eyebrows during draft weekend when he floated the idea of an 18 game regular season and a shortened preseason. Do you guys think this is a good idea? I mean, the players is already playing this anyway. Once Roger Goodell floats that, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of time. When? Yeah. When is it going to happen? When is it going to happen? Not if it happens, it's going to happen. Um, I don't mind it. Now, do you do you get an increase or do you like just split your check up now in the 18 weeks or do you get an extra check? That that's the thing the players want to know. Will we get an increase in pay or will our salaries just now be split up not 18 weeks, 19, maybe 20 weeks, as opposed to now giving us an extra check? Well, how does the preseason work with the check? I mean, you get two hundred dollars. Uh, now you get like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. Okay, so maybe preseason. that's a good thing. You know, no, check. no, man. The no. game, the game is like the game is in the preseason game. It's like, yeah, like if you're a starter. You're playing twelve hundred bucks. You're playing fifteen plays max. Well, it depends on what. It, first of all, it depends on what coach you had. It depends on what game we're talking about. Because if it's the first game, fifteen plays, right? Second game into second half. Nah, second game, we would go into the second quarter. Third second game, quarter, second, we went second into quarter, the second half. Second quarter, third game into the second half. Yeah. Fourth, One probably series. don't play at you all. Would go a series so it just depends. Play. But no, nah, 1,200, I'm not trading a game for a preseason check. That's not going to fucking happen. Ain't no way in the world player ever going to do that. Why would I play for $1,200 and I'm a quarterback and I'm playing for $4 million for one game, but you want to give me 1200 for one game? Yeah. That soda never happened. The pay will probably increase. They'll probably figure it out. But 18 games is coming, like TJ it's said, gonna, at some it's point. Gonna, it's going to happen for sure. And, 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 and this is where you're going to see now a lot of the records. 2,000 yards, that's going to be broken. Receptions <laughs> yeah. in a season, that's going to be broken. <laughs> uh, be like, catches and all that now. <laughs> These records will be broken, and then in about 25 years, when they play 20 games, that's going to be broken as well. So these records, right. they're going to keep getting broken. Oh, he's really good. Yeah. The dude played in 18 games, man. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you look at, speaking of records and receivers, the 49ers took Ricky uh, Pearsall in the first round from Florida. What you think they should do with Ayuka Debo? Or keep them both, all three, get rid of one? This year, all three will be there. I believe, and they also dra drafted Jacob Cowan out of Arizona. This is what I believe will happen if Pearsall or Cowan show that they can play this season. Ayuk or Debo, one of those guys will be gone 2025. But I'm not about, but see, see, I, I get it. Ayuk got to get paid. If I'm Ayuk, man, you, I'm not watching the Philadelphia Eagles pay these two dudes and give them their money and you want me to run around for $17 million. I just... I, I agree. I'm going to argue that down to the point where, you know... I mean, I talked to IU, and so... I'm going to argue that down. He, he'll, him, he said it publicly. He wants to get paid. So, baby. And or trade me I don't and get know, paid. I don't know if the Niners are going to offer what he wants. They made offers. Yeah, no, I know it's, that. But it's, it's not what he wants. And... This is where these teams mess up. The longer you wait, the more the more you gonna pay me. Yeah. And so, if I go early, I give you a discount. He sees I'm in raw get thirty. Now he's like, <laughs> I'm not signing for a dollar less than that. I'm not signing for a dollar less than that. And obviously, the Niners. Think about only that though. You just said thirty. Think about that though, TJ. That's crazy for y'all, huh? <laughs> crazy, right? No, it ain't for me. I'm good. I, I'm it, saying, though, just no, I'm, 30 I'm, a year? No, like, I get just hearing I, it. I came at a different era and a yeah. different time. You're, you were born too so soon. So Jerry Rice knew, going <laughs> right. to be playing what I got paid. Exactly. And, and you it's know. Never going to stop. It just, that's what it's going to be. But it, it's good for the game. But the the Niners, they can't, they can't afford to pay. See, what they're looking at is. The room. Here, here come Purdy. Yeah. Here it come Purdy down the line. But when Purdy's coming, is McCaffrey got Purdy, still going to be there? You got Purdy. Is, will Kittle you got still McCaffrey, be there? You, you got don't Kittle. know. No, Purdy coming next year. So, yeah, because he was a seven you rounder. You got to pay so, him you, mandatory. next offseason. Yeah. Mandatory. So you got Purdy. You got McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Then you can make the adjustments and do that because he got three years left with high numbers. You just bring that forward, play with it a little bit. You got Ward. And you got to pay Diamador Lenore. You got to pay him. I think they're going to let Demo you know? go because they, dra they drafted a corner. And so I believe they're trying to 
they would like to work something out, but they're not going to pay him what he should probably be paid. Well, when you go early, you're going to get you go early, you're going to get less money. Yes. When you go early, but do you want to run the risk? See, I'm not a I'm me personally, I'm not a risk taker when it comes to stuff like that cuz I don't need to be the highest paid. I don't need I'm cool. I, I just want to be happy. I'm with you with that. Yeah, I don't need to be I don't need to count what so and so got. So if they offer 10 million a year, who which guy? Demo. Diamador. I don't know if I don't know is that is for a nickel corner, I mean I, or or a corner is 10 that, million a year. Is That's that is that a real number highest for paid a corner? corners are at 20 a year? Highest paid corners at 20 million a year. I understand, but what do they see him as? And that's my point. You know? And it's what do they what does he see himself or at? Or what does he see himself at? What does he at? see himself at? Yeah. Because ultimately it comes down to when he's players, when we look at other guys' contracts, if I compare my if I think I'm comparable to this guy, I, I'm not getting less than him. And so who does he compare himself to in that realm of this is where I should fall? To me, I agree with you. Make if, if I'm satisfied, I don't care what anybody else says or thinks. Let me get this, and I'm good. So you know when I when I came when so when I left the Jets to go to Tampa Bay, I could have held Tampa Bay up for way more money than I got, but they made me the highest paid receiver in the history of the game. I was good. I was like, okay, whatever. If even if it was by a dollar, I don't even remember. I was like, fine, whatever. It's not not that big of a deal. Because Randy Moss is going to jump me and leapfrog me next, in about nine months anyway. So that's the way I look at it. Like when I go back to IUK situation, I'm not stepping my ass on the field when $85 million of guaranteed money was just handed to A.J. Brown. I'm not, I'm not stepping on the field. That, that, that's tough, though, man, because... I'm not, I'm not stepping on the field. That bothers a player. That bothers a player when you see the Eagles give not only A.J. Brown 32 a year... Yeah. Devontae but I, you, you see, you keep that talking about, a, you know, you, you do what a lot of people do. You talking about the average. Yeah. I'm talking about the real money. The uh, 85 million <laughs> in the first but three is the real money. This is how I look at it. I, I look at per year, they're not releasing Devontae Smith. He's too young. He's been too successful. Oh, no, of course. Like, and so you're going to see... The first three years of that that's deal. That's what. That's the only part I ever and, look at. And so ever. AJ Brown, they not releasing him. No, he's too too young and still balling. And so he gonna see all eighty five. He that. gonna see all of that. All of it. And, and so when I you, unless he just falls off a cliff, he gonna see his entire second contract. That's why they gotta pay me. And so, and the sooner you get paid, the the quicker you can get to contract number three. Yeah. And, and so that's why what BA is. Man, just pay me what I'm worth. I've earned this. Mm -hmm. I've earned it. Because he's going to have another good year. But are they going to pay him? I, I I foresee them trading Debo after this season, giving Ayuk the money. a deal, and rolling with Ayuk and Pearson. That's what want, I see. But does he want to? See, it's it. he should be paid now. Why wait? I'm not, I'm I don't not, understand I'm not risk taking, stepping on the field for y'all. And I'm watching everybody else get paid. So I don't do watch Michael Pittman get paid. I don't watch Amon Ra get paid. I don't watch both dudes in Philly get paid. I don't watch this other dude leave hey. uh, 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 Jacksonville, Kelvin Ridley, to go to Tennessee they, get they, paid. They, they pay Michael Pittman money now. Now they would because mm -hmm. they see where it's going. It's too late. No, they paid him. They paid no, Pittman? No, they would pay Iuk Michael Pittman oh, money oh, now. Yeah. Yeah, but he ain't taking that now. He's not taking that now. And so now you it's what you just said. You keep waiting. But I'm not waiting as a player. What what do you do though? Because do you, do I'm you, not stepping my ass on the field because just, if something just, happens to me. Do you go in there and how because I'm not, I'm going in there and I'm gonna run around. To me, I don't care. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go in there and run around and say my back hurt. No, you can do that. That's yeah. what I'm gonna do. <laughs> no, you can do that. That's what I'm gonna but do. Yeah, I'm, you can do that, but I wouldn't do that part. I just go in like I did when I was traded to the to the Bucks for the two number ones. I told them, I said, look, they didn't want. I had two years left on my deal. I had I'll perform but my deal. You know how it is nowadays. You you don't report to training camp. Oh, I you understand. Don't, you don't get a credit this season. No, I understand. They can start fining you. No, I get all that. Can't but you lose can money go, trying to chase can, money. But you can go to training camp and not participate and just sit on the sidelines, and that's. And you're that's fine what, because you checked in. That's what Bosa but did. And they gave point, Bosa a deal. Yeah, but at some point, though, if they don't want to pay, but they was always going to pay Bosa. They was going to pay him. They wasn't going to play games with him. They was going to get it done. If they don't want to pay Ayuk, my whole point of this is, 
If I'm Ayuk, I'm walking in and I'm telling them, I don't want to be here. Typically, in all professional sports, and I want y'all to follow me here, when a player says, when a player says it, I don't want to be here, they're usually moved. That's a fact. That that whole Debo trade me, trade me. Debo never wanted to leave. They knew that because Debo wasn't. Uh, 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 he didn't have this. He just wanted his money. He didn't have this aggressive enough approach, yeah. assertiveness to say. And they know that. They know that about everybody. So when I got traded, Parcells already knew. Yeah, he, him, <laughs> that motherfucker crazy. We got to get rid of him and get our picks because his ass will not show up. That, that, and so coaches, they have the post of the room and they know. Front office executives, they know. Oh, that motherfucker, yeah, he, him? Yeah, we got to trade him. We got to trade him. They, they got to do something. They got to figure this out. Yeah. And... As a player, I'm telling you, that does not make it easy when you constantly seeing this dude has got paid. Absolutely, this, man. It, it doesn't make man, it easy. On. It actually makes you mad. You're like, wow. They just paid. I'm yeah. better than him. Even if you're not better. You still and in your mind, you it's think, like, yeah. Man, my team must think I ain't shit because they're not trying to give me anywhere near this. And so now it's the animosity. It starts to make you angry. Yeah. And B.A. does have that temperament anywhere. He'll be like, I don't want to be here. So, yeah. So, Keyshawn... Uh, TJ Hushmanzada and I grew up in Southern California, mm -hmm. as you know. We both went to junior college, as you know. We both played in the Pac-10 conference, as you know. And no all longer a conference. Well, yeah, it's they, all yeah. toe up now. Yeah. I don't even know what they could. What are they? What? What's what? What? What sport are we Pac in right now? Are we in baseball, baseball. season? College? Baseball. Yeah. Did, is it still a Pac-12 baseball? Or did they move it to the Big Ten now? I don't even nah, know. It's Pac-12. So it's still, it's still Pac-12 Pac yeah, baseball still got season. The network, and so I think it's like one more year. This is it. This so is it'll be last, like baseball and softball will be the last of the Pac-12 till when? And once it ends, it's I know. It. But when? Like when does it stop? It ends in June. So June. Next okay. Month. So we've been in the same conference, JUCO, LA, everything. Did you also know that we both have had stalkers in our career? <laughs> <laughs> did you I know did, that? I hey. just learned that Offset. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man. Stalkers, it's hey. very similar. Hey, it's these looks, man. It's these looks that me and Key over here got, man. Look at that. Look at that smile. Yeah. No, the, the, it, it's crazy because I was telling the crew, the production crew, prior to you coming here, I was just, we was just shooting the shit and talking, you know, talking shop. And I was telling, I was like, I had a stalker. Well, I've had a couple, but this one in particular, when I played football, right? And so it was like the Jets to Tampa. To Dallas. And so all of it, I don't even remember my jet day. I have no idea. But in Dallas, it all kind of started to come to the surface in Dallas because the young lady started sending these letters. Bruh. And so the, 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 the person that worked for me opened up all my mail. They did everything and they would read it and they would tell me, what do you think? I'm like, I just throw this shit in trash. And I kept just throwing it. And then they became more aggressive and more aggressive and more aggressive to the point where Ingrid was like, we got to go to the NFL security with this. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't feel like dealing with that. She's like, I'm telling you, this woman is talking about God has a plan for you and this and that. So it started getting creepy. So I'm like, all right, whatever, call the security. So now I'm having to deal with NFL security and they like, are you sure you never messed with this woman before? I said, man, did you, did you look at this person? They're like, well, we got to ask the question. I'm like, okay, cool. Ask the question. So they told her cease and desist. So she starts sending even more threatening letters and mad because I gave her a hug. I shook her hand with the Jets. I shook her hand with Tampa Bay. I finally gave her a hug, apparently, when I was in Dallas. Because I never parked up top with the players. I parked underneath in Dallas. I would park always underneath TJ, under the stadium. And then I'd just drive out the tunnel when the game is over because I didn't want to deal with people. This particular time, for whatever reason, my car winded up in a player's parking lot because they had to move it. So I had to walk out and people around. And I guess I wrote, shook the hand, gave the lady a hug. So all of a sudden... She didn't. Uh, she didn't clean that shirt forever, huh? She she I don't know what. I don't know what she, it was. She, she it. cherished that. But, uh, but all of a sudden, I became this, you know, symbol to her, right. and she just wouldn't stop relentlessly. But the shit was scary when she started talking about God has a plan. When they start talking like that, it gets real weird. Yeah, man, I'm going pretty, pretty much damn near verbatim. 
Same, right now. Same type of... Yeah, my shit, it's been going on for years. She stopped. Mm. I read about it. And then she got arrested. Mm. And then she started back up. And it's just like, what's pissing me is like, I got to spend money on attorneys. That's what bothers me more than anything. Like, I'm wasting my money right. on these damn attorneys that I can't get back. And it's like, I don't understand it. Um, she just better tread careful. <laughs> um, but yeah, she changed her last name to my last name. I, mean, I read, you know, I, mean, I that, read that, it. That, I saw it. it and there's yeah, not that many start, people. With the, and she with started last back name. up, sending letters. I mean, she was sending. What's her? What? Because you, 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 you are. What's your nationality again? Middle Eastern, it's per, Mid Persian. Persian, and my mom is black. Black. Is she have any Persian in her? Nah, she so just like a black that. woman. <laughs> I go to, I go to. We went to court, right? And so my wife's cousin. Her husband was a chief of police, so they were kind of advising us with this. So um, she goes to court with us, and there's a woman walking by. I don't even know it's her. <laughs> and then when we get into the courtroom. She came to court, though. And Man. then, yeah, she went, bro, she showed up. <laughs> and so then I'm angry. You know, I got a bad temper. So I'm, ta I'm talking crazy, and the judge it was like, you can't talk like that. That big old swole bailiff was like, well, you got to watch how you. I'm like, my bad, bro. But I'm like, I don't even fucking know you. Like, Leave me alone. Leave me the fuck. And yeah. she says, I didn't know he felt this while well, I leave him alone. Lies. Man. Lies it's right back. Bro, like texting us. Like how you get our cell phones, like sending us text messages. I know, bro. yeah. It's when I funny. say us, me and my wife. It's funny, but it's serious. Like, yeah, that's, it's, that's it's serious. serious. It is. It's, no, it's, it's, it's funny, but of course we take it serious. Yeah, yeah you have to because yeah. I had to hire a private investigator to kind of figure out where did the root, where did this start? And... I did autograph signing. I must have took a picture and hugged her. And her family said she became obsessed with me from that moment. Divorced mm -hmm. her husband and followed me from Cincinnati yeah, to see, Seattle. Yeah, see, I, I have all that her divorce husband. husband stuff. I, that's something yeah, different. Divorced her husband, bro. Yes. <laughs> I ain't had the divorce husband. Yeah, bro. It's crazy. I done, had, I done had some... I done had some... On the male and the female side of stalking. But I... Yeah, the divorce part, that's... Yeah, yeah that's crazy, that's, bro. Yeah. yeah. That means that they're not all... Not all quite the way there, to, right? Yeah. It's so wild to me. Yeah, man. But it is that way. I remember, you know, I had the Antonio Carrion, ex -U -X, Dorsey High School wide receiver, same stalking and just weird, scared the heck out of me, man. It's crazy, bro. Scared, literally, literally spooked me when I played the tab. But, but, but I appreciate <laughs> it. My dog. Yes, sir. That's what happens PJ. when you're rich, black, and successful, you know? <laughs> well, some would say that. You know, I may not be black. Who knows? <laughs> That's what's up today. Thanks again to TJ Hushmanzada for joining the show. Don't forget to subscribe and follow All Facts Pod on social media. Until then, peace. And